Hello, hello, hello. Um, we are doing a coffee video today per the request of many of you guys, which is exciting for me because I completely nerd out over coffee, but I didn't just want to blatantly put one of my hobbies on the channel. But you have unleashed uh, a bit of a door of just coffee nerdiness. So strap in because this is going to be like a legitimately nerdy coffee video. Well, we are going to go over the seven different elements to making a really great cup of coffee. And this is blatantly stolen from my, uh, my good friend Aaron Blanco over at Brown Coffee. So if you're ever in San Antonio, go check his shop out. It is the best uh, coffee shop in Texas, in my opinion. Now, if you are new to home brewing your cup of coffee, we will later go over all the equipment here, what you should buy. Um, and I know we're gonna be told that we're not minimalist with our coffee stuff. I know it's like the other thing that we're not minimalist with. This is just an atrocious amount of coffee stuff. And I actually use all of this. This coffee thing is going to be a two-part series. This video is about seven different factors you have to consider when making a cup of coffee at home. And part two will be equipment demonstration and recommendations. So with beans, just to give you a quick uh, profile of what to expect in coffee beans, uh, there are three basic growing regions for coffee beans. Those are Central America and Brazil, Eastern Africa, and then Indonesia. They all have completely different profiles. This is way oversimplifying, but the, the best way to, to tell about it would be that Central America is very, very balanced. It's a, it's a clean cup of coffee. It's very fruity. It's, um, it's the most coffee tasting coffee, I guess you could say. Uh, so a lot of your most basic coffees are from Colombia or, or surrounding countries. Brazil is actually a little bit more similar to Indonesia in its flavor profile. So it's much grittier. Um, it has a kind of a heavier taste to it, maybe more chocolatey taste. And then East Africa, those are the poppiest. So that's like Kenya and Ethiopia and Rwanda. Um, they are extremely floral. They're extremely juicy and acidic and, and pop. I mean, they just like pop at you. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, those are my personal favorites, but they're, they're really, really complex and, and just punch you in the face. The one thing you can really keep an eye on with your beans is the roast. Um, this is where I really nerd out. So roasting is all about developing sugar compounds in the coffee. And you gotta remember that coffee is a fruit. So what you want in your coffee is a lot of cl like clean, sweet fruit. That's what you're looking for. And I, a lot of this is a subjective, although I would say it's, it's pretty objective. Like a good cup of coffee is clean and it's sweet and it's fruity. Um, so feel free to call me out on that. Um, but what you're looking for in a coffee is that sweetness without being too sweet. And so it's a bit of a bell curve. Um, if you don't, if you under roast coffee, if it's, it starts out green and then when you start roasting it, it turns white, then orange. If you have that orangey or really light brown, it's way under roasted. Those sugar compounds have not been developed. They are, uh, it's still gonna taste a lot like grass. You know, you're gonna get way too much of that wood flavor in there and that hay grassy flavor. And then as you get more to the top of the bell curve, at the, at the perfect point of roasting development is going to be um, dark brown. It's going to have perfectly developed the sugars. It's not, you don't have that hay taste yet, but it also doesn't taste charred. And then as you over roast it, as it's in there too long, you're over developing the sugars. Um, if they caramelize, they're gonna turn shiny and black. And uh, if you like to drink Charbucks coffee, you, you can look at their beans and they're gonna be shiny black beans. They're just grotesquely over roasted. A good roast is going to be a medium brown. One more quick tip with your beans. You need a grinder yourself. Do not buy already ground coffee. Um, once you grind it, it oxidizes and starts to lose its flavor. I won't go too deep into to why that is, mostly because I don't really know. Um, but just, just grind your own coffee. It will be more fresh and it will be more flavorful. Grind is actually probably the thing that you can most quickly improve about your home coffee game. Uh, it is surprisingly important. It is, it's one of the crucial factors. So like if you have a bad grinder, you could have the best beans in the world, they could be the best roast in the world, but you're still not gonna have a good cup of coffee. And the reason for this, uh, if you think about, um, think about like a bucket and you fill half one side with sand and one side with rocks, right? And then you try to pour water over that bucket. Well, the water is all gonna run to the rock side. Well, the, and the coffee works the exact same way. So if you have a really bad grind, you have really big chunks, and then you have some powder, you put it all in a, uh, you know, in a filter and you try to run the water through it, where's the water gonna run? It's gonna run through the chunks. So the coffee that you get at the end of the day will way over extract the big chunks of coffee and it will completely under extract the powder coffee. So a good grinder um, 
which we'll, we'll give grinder recommendations later, but a good grinder is going to be consistent. And people spend, our good shops will spend thousands and thousands of dollars just to get just a little bit more consistent of a grind. If you have a bad cup of coffee at home and you're buying good beans and you have good water, it's probably your grinder. You should have a 16 to one or a 15 to one ratio of water to coffee. So every one gram of coffee, 16 grams of water, that's a really, really good um, you know, rule of thumb. Uh, for espresso, it's gonna be totally different. You know, two parts water to one part coffee. But for just a brewed cup of coffee, 16 to one is a good ratio. Just have a scale. Again, I'll talk to this later, but just have a scale that will be able to measure that. Um, that way, you know, you're not, you know, you're not over extracting or under extracting your coffee. You have just enough water to get the right amount of extraction for your surface area. And time is, I mean, it's pretty much the same principles. Not as important um, if you're doing something like a pour over, but still you're trying not to over extract or under extract your coffee. Water is something that you can get really deep into, like having better and better water, having better and better coffee. Um, I would say just get some filtered water. I mean, the thing to keep in mind is if you use tap water, all the minerals in that water will affect the flavor and the quality of your coffee. It's just gonna happen. So, you know, if you're wanting to make decent coffee, just get some, some a good water filter or buy some water at the store and you'll be perfectly fine. The barista technique is not important. I, I mean, it's, it's slightly important, it's by far the least important here. Uh, coffee is a science. If you've got all your variables correct, I don't really care who you have making your coffee, it will probably be good coffee. And I will prove that by having Mark make some, some coffee in the next video. Keep going, keep, pour more and more and more. Ah! I know it can feel intimidating to have seven different factors here to consider. Uh, just remember that you can improve your home system piece by piece. You don't have to go all out and spend hundreds of dollars and just buy a bunch of crap all at once. For instance, you could start by buying a $40 hand grinder and that'd be the piece that you buy. And then next you can save up to buy an AeroPress. Um, and then next you can start buying better water. So you don't have to try to get everything at once. You can start with the pieces and just slowly build a really good homebrew system. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had too much fun making this because I just go down rabbit trails of nerdiness with people. Um, they usually don't care about it. So hopefully someone will find this interesting. Um, in our next video, I am going to demonstrate how to use all of this equipment here, give you my favorite recommendations, uh, for, for traveling and how to do it in a really minimalist way or to have a full home rig, what you really need. So stick around for that video, but please let me know uh, if this was interesting to you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any corrections, let me know that as well. Would love to know your tips and tricks and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys, see you soon.